In this part of the world, MIT stands for Made in Taiwan. In fact, while the American computer industry has been worrying about the Japanese and more recently the Koreans, the Taiwanese have been quietly emerging as a major player in the worldwide PC industry, not only making clones, but developing new machines of their own, which in some cases are outperforming their American counterparts. Today, we are in Taiwan to take a look at the Asian clones on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, we have a typical PC setup here that you might find in somebody's home or office, a multi-tech computer, Princeton monitor, MyTech disk drive. But you know what all these three components have in common? They're all made in Taiwan. Okay. <laughs> Taiwan, in fact, is the world's leading manufacturer of computer monitors right now. IBM makes their monitors there. They're the world's leading manufacturer of disk drives. They and the Koreans, of course, make most of the clones that we see here. And we know the Asian clones are taking quite a bit of market share away from IBM and other American manufacturers. Should we be concerned about this? Is this a threat to America's leadership role in computer technology? <laughs> well, Stuart, my, my personal concern is that I look in the paper and I see a, a used AT for a $9.95, and you see something like this for $6.95. Right, so it's all right. uh, confusing. But uh, I think there's not a real threat here because what we're dealing with is, te is the technology of manufacturing, not the technology of computing. Mm -hmm. Now, we're always going to have a very large group of people here that are in the United States and elsewhere who are really, really are, are interested in sales and service, reliability, uh, state-of-the-art kind of uh, computing. And those are the people who will buy uh, the, the more expensive mm -hmm. machines. Now, these machines act as, as good filler machines, for example, as workstations, uh, word processing, and things of that sort, where it's not really critical as far as reliability is concerned. I think we're seeing that our technology is moving along, and the clones or machines like this will follow, but there's, they're not going to catch up. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to go to Taiwan today to take a look at these Asian clones, see just how good they are, help you decide whether or not an Asian clone is a safe bet to buy. We're going to start out with a visit to Science City, just outside Taipei, the Silicon Valley, of Taiwan. Less than 100 miles off the coast of mainland China is the island of Taiwan, a densely inhabited, proudly independent nation officially called Republic of China on Taiwan. The ROC's 19 million residents now enjoy one of the highest standards of living in Asia, made evident by a profusion of consumer goods and due largely to a very successful export-oriented industry. Our country uh, is very much export-oriented country. Our economic growth was based on fast export-oriented industry. And uh, therefore, the competitive strength is very important to our export capability. A large proportion of Taiwan's exports fall into the electronics category, although most American buyers wouldn't recognize the local brand names electric fans to refrigerators to computers, Taiwan turns out products for such companies as Amana, GTE, ITT, and IBM. The special relationship that permits such brand name ledger domain is called OEM, or Original Equipment Manufacturing. The OEM connection was clearly evident at a recent computer show in the capital city of Taipei. Computex was one of the first computer trade shows to be held in Taipei's World Trade Center, and it featured dozens of small booths with intriguing products and names. Some, like Tatung, are well-known companies in the home market with sales in the hundreds of millions of dollars. But many booths featured less famous manufacturers like KingTech, Holicon, and OEM Tech, making it clear from the start that buyers are free to choose any name they like. Even the larger companies like MyTech and Microtech are satisfied with a behind-the-scenes approach to marketing their products. 
Now, Michael Tai brand name is not known like uh, Hewlett Packard, for example. So it will take a long time, several years, to able to set up your recognition and a distribution channel. So our strategy is, uh, if there's a reputable company and they're interested in our product, and we support them, we call OEM, they carry our product. In that way, our profit is lower, but the, our product can serve more people. Until recently, Taiwanese products for export also suffered from a quality image. For years, the country's industry was associated with cheap, mass-produced goods and an abundant supply of labor. But that image has changed. This country, you, you can sense it now when you are staying here, that our standard of living and cost of living has been rising rapidly in the last few years. And so the wage has been increased very high. Therefore, it is no longer economic to depend heavily on our traditional labor-intensive industry. The increasing wages of Taiwan's factory workers do not seem to concern the local computer companies who see the cost advantage in engineering rather than in manufacturing. In computer, the cost, labor assembly may be represent less than 2% of the total cost. So the key cost is in R&D, in marketing, supporting the products, in overhead. I compare with the uh, uh, states, I think uh, the cost of, of, human, of brain is uh, much cheaper. Taiwan schools graduate as many engineers per capita as Japan, a much higher proportion than in the United States. This influx of engineering graduates has propelled Taiwan's computer industry from a source of cheap clones to an original contender. Taiwan has the technical capability to develop the high-end PC. Uh, when you look at the PC industries, right now, uh, IBM uh, moved to uh, 10 megahertz AT, which one, one year ago might have already uh, brought to the market and some other company. Widely displayed at Computex were plenty of peripherals and components, the computer parts that made Taiwan a major exporter. But Computex also featured some distinctly new products as well, from some of the leading local companies. Tatung is one of Taiwan's biggest companies, and the largest producer of computer monitors in the world. One of its biggest clients also happens to be the biggest computer company in the world. Tatung, which produces a vast array of electrical appliances, also operates its own school, the Tatung Technical Institute. Originally, Tatung Tech was meant to be a vocational school, but it's expanded to offer advanced degrees in everything from computer science to management. Tatung's president believes that a quality-minded export industry is critical to Taiwan. Uh, this is uh, really the similar, like the, after World War II, things made in Japan is considered very cheap, but not so good, not so reliable. And I think that, uh, uh, as uh, you know, we're making good products. Uh, so that some other, other companies, but very important is that uh, uh, there be some countries, a quality authority, where they can, they can uh, certify the, all these, uh, these products. Among Taiwan's top computer exporters is Multitech. Started in 1976 with $25,000 in capital, Multitech now employs 2,700 employees and expects to sell $350 million worth of computers this year. The company's founder has been called the Steve Jobs of Taiwan. I don't totally agree. Uh, because the market in Taiwan is comparatively very small, and also the capital market is not mature in Taiwan. So to develop a company like, like Multitech is totally different like Apple. We have more and more difficult. Multitech is a major exporter to the United States and manufactures PCs for Texas Instruments and also makes computers under the Franklin label for Sears and Roebuck. The company is just beginning to sell in the States under its own brand, Acer. But the president believes it'll take some time before Taiwanese brand names become common. 
two major problems. Number one, of course, is the image. How multi-tech is a good product, the you know, quality products difference with the you know, normal uh, what is the product. I think it takes a time to convince that. Number two is the scale. Original, the multi-tech is not, you know, big scale enough to really support the U.S. market. Multitech is located in Taiwan's Science Park, a government sponsored high-tech industrial community that is part Silicon Valley, part free trade zone, and part college campus. Some of Taiwan's other computer leaders are there too, like MyTech and Microtech. And some of the park's foreign residents have names that should ring familiar with almost any computer user. Microtech is an unusual example of the reverse brain drain. Whereas most of Taiwan's overseas educated students tend to stay overseas, Microtech's founder quit his job in the States to look for new opportunities back home. We were working for Xerox Corporation. We were in uh, Los Angeles and uh, doing uh, advanced research and uh, product design work. I think it's a bad to reach the age we call mid-age crisis. And uh, we all have the feeling that uh, maybe uh, we uh, should come up uh, to do something of our own. We really didn't think of uh, to move to Silicon Valley or get some venture money to start over there. And I think uh, there are thousands of companies start that way. And uh, the chances of success may be smaller. Microtech's principal product is a desktop scanner, which is sold in the U.S. under the AST label. In fact, Microtech is the world's leading supplier of scanners with about 69% of the market. Microtech's president is skeptical of traditional offshore manufacturing, at least where PC products are concerned. Technology evolution, the pace is much faster. There are many new technology are coming up. I think the product life cycle, there's a trend, gets shorter and shorter. There's a tremendous need for developing new product. Now, to getting a product mature and then move to offshore manufacturing, the day seems, uh, days are seems over. So the new trend is a half R&D and a and manufacture close tied together. Like most companies in Taiwan, Multitech and Microtech both started small, and they continue to see small size as a distinct advantage, at least in the computer business. At a place like Taiwan, now, I think we are not used to that big of corporation. Our economy structure are against that. So most of the enterprise company size are much smaller in scale, like uh, in between uh, 100 employee to 500 employee. That allow you to able, the company is smaller, able to move fast. The small independent manufacturer is a hallmark of Taiwanese industry and is readily visible everywhere in Taipei, from the fruit vendors, to the food stalls, to the little booths at computer shows. The KS Brother Box Company, which markets under the KingTech label, is an example of the small exporter. KingTech doesn't have a high-tech plant in Science Park. Instead, the factory, offices, even the living quarters of some of its employees are in one large building in downtown Taipei. The assembly line turns out XT and AT compatibles and a new portable 286 machine with an LCD screen. We uh, export uh, all around the world, uh, especially the States and Canada, uh, South Africa, Switzerland, Holland, and uh, England, and also the Australia and uh, Italy. The island of Taiwan has less than half the population of Korea, yet it has twice as many small electronics companies, over 65,000, and almost 3,000 of them make computers. This may seem like a challenge to the foreign buyer, but it's also an advantage. The thing about Taiwan and Korea is Korea, is, they have got some big industries. They've got Hyundai, they've got Samsung, they've got a, a few others. And they're mainly Korean corporations selling their products, and their prices are good, but they've already got sales channels set up in the U.S. So if you want to buy from them, you're buying from a U.S. sales rep who's got a big piece of fat in there to su support him. In Taiwan, many of the companies are American financed and owned, and many of them are just small shops, so it's kind of economically speaking, it's not a monopoly, it's a complete opposite, it's a perfect market here. While lots of PCs and peripherals are made here in Taiwan, 
Many of them start out as U.S. designs and end up as U.S. products sold in American stores. For a look at the U.S. connection to the Asian clone story, here's Wendy Woods in California. With the exception of its monitors, every product Atari makes, from its game machines to its sophisticated ST computers and new laser printer, is made in Taiwan. Atari's U.S. facility is just a big think tank where the products are designed. It's cheaper this way. Labor is cheaper overseas, and Atari makes no bones about its interest in cutting costs. It's possible to do uh, manufacturing uh, in such a way that is not too labor intensive now, but if you don't have a very automated factory, um, it makes sense right now to do your manufacturing overseas. But engineers have had some trouble with this arrangement. Communication is a problem when you and your factory don't speak the same language. Then there's the shipping time, up to three weeks for product to reach the U.S. There's one other disadvantage to manufacturing in Taiwan. Atari says that plant is working at capacity, and Atari would like to expand its manufacturing capability. So armed with millions of dollars from a public stock offering, Atari is thinking about opening its first plant somewhere in North America. The bottom line is that the consumer in this industry has shown that it really doesn't matter if it says made in USA, made in Taiwan, or made on Mars on the package. Um, they're looking for a price and a value, and we have to be able to provide that to them. But at this point, it looks very good that we can provide that with domestically manufactured products. In Sunnyvale, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Taiwan's success as PC vendor to the world is giving way to a new eagerness to become an innovator as well, with the government providing some basic support. The Science Park Project is an attempt to merge some of the entrepreneurial features of Silicon Valley with the investment appeal of a free trade export zone. The 1,000-acre park has around 80 companies installed or waiting to move in, just a hint of what's planned for the future. I'm saying that this year our total output uh, would be about 700 million. Ten years from now, would be 7 billion. And, uh, today, that uh, the including the old city, we, we've asked to gather less than 400,000 people. And uh, ten years now, from now, would be a billion, a, a million people. Before Science Park, venture capital in Taiwan was usually a grant you applied for from the government. Today, the park boasts five private venture capital companies, along with banks and two universities on the outskirts. But Science Park still has a long way to go. On a good Science Park, you have uh, many ingredients. In addition to just the physical environment, they have a uh, good service industry. They have a good banking industry, like the venture capitals. They have a good lawyers, law firms, accounting firms, all these things. In Taiwan, we don't have that many. In fact, we're way behind, way, way behind. At MyTech, Multitech, and Microtech, the search for new products is central to the company's plans for the future. Microtech, the leading vendor of desktop scanners, is exploring new links between scanners, laser printers, and optical disks. I think uh, CD-ROM with uh, the tremendous amount of capacity they're able to store, for example, we believe uh, a quarter and a half inch CD-ROM, both sides, able to store maybe 10,000 A4 regular size document in the image format. So uh, that kind of information needed some kind of input device. So scanner will be a must equipment. At MyTac, best known in the States for its floppy disk drives, the emphasis is also on desktop publishing on the software side. While looking for a solution to the memory-hungry Chinese character, MyTac discovered a way to reduce the memory required to store any character. In the desktop publishing, you need to generate character, no matter it's Chinese, English, Japanese, in different font. Okay, so uh, an hour uh, Universal Engine will be will will have the capability to do so in small in very low cost. Uh, be, besides that, it will generate a character in very high speed to cope with the laser printer. But the technology we develop is we use computer to learn the characters, 
and they use the, the, the character features and to enlarge, to shrink, and uh, to make it into different font. Almost everyone in the PC business is wondering how IBM's PS2 architecture will affect clone sales, and Taiwanese companies are no exception. While some are hard at work trying to unlock its secrets, others are contemplating a different course of action. The Dang IBM group maybe define their own standard. That we may join that kind of group instead of just follow IBM. Because the, the outside group is actually is represent more than you know, 60% or 70% of the power. Taiwan's official agency for high-tech research is called ITRI, or Industrial Technology Research Institute. Its original role was to perform the basic research and development that many small Taiwanese firms were unable to afford. The Taiwan industry was performing too little R&D themselves. So the government set up this institute uh, to supplement uh, their work, R&D work. Uh, at first, it was 100% funded by the government. But as time progressed, industry began to find ITRI's resources to be uh, very attractive uh, to them. ITRI's electronics research arm, called URSO, has both short and long-term research programs. For Taiwan's chip industry, they're designing ASICs, or application-specific integrated circuits. Taiwan is the world's leading supplier of specialized chips for consumer products like toys, telephones, and watches. Urso's development work on the 8386 microprocessor gave Taiwan's PC makers the jump on some of their American competitors. Multitech had a low price 386 on sale just a few weeks after Compaq's initial introduction. I'm not looking for any uh, dramatic breakthroughs. I think uh, what we are trying to do is to um, uh, put very solid, uh, very uh, what may even be considered as a as uh, mundane work, uh, but it's the kind of work, the kind of foundation you need to, uh, to upgrade uh, Taiwan industry a step at a time. You know. But there are some cutting edge projects at Erso, and they're beginning to bear fruit. Chinese voice recognition and speech synthesis, for example. Since Chinese is a tonal language, paper dictionaries are only imperfect guides to pronunciation. To overcome this shortcoming, Urso has developed a CD-ROM dictionary Knowledge. complete with sound and graphics. Knowledge. It can be played on any compact disc player through a black box called a multifunction CD-ROM controller. The controller, initially meant for schools and libraries, will sell for about $3,000. For Taiwan's new generation of entrepreneurs, the future looks bright. Some of its bigger clients are beginning to talk about tariffs and protectionism, but trade problems haven't affected sales figures yet. Multitech's PC sales are up 100%, and the company has a long-term strategy based on the ancient Chinese game of Go. The Go is really a long-term game. That's number one. Number two, the Go always use the strategy, OK? Uh, different kind of strategy, like they always put the stone in our head, try to make a better position, okay? Then, because you have a base there, then you can try to very aggressive and also take risk in higher technology or other things. The quiet success of Taiwanese computers overseas is a sign of the industry's maturity. The key ingredients of that success are not difficult to uncover. To win this computer business, the real long-term weapon is really the human resources and that Taiwan have that. When we came to Taiwan, we expected to find some low-cost PC clones with names we had never heard of. Well, we did find that, but we also found some rather innovative new technology here and we discovered that hidden inside many computers with familiar American brand names are the technology and the expertise of the people of Taiwan. That's our look at the Asian clones. We'll be back in the States in just a minute for this week's Computer News.
Lexus file this week, IBM is trying to overcome some recent bad publicity on the PS2 Model 50. Some recent computer press reports said 40% of the Model 50s delivered were dead on arrival. IBM admits there is a bias problem, but that the problem is easily corrected by using the reference disk which is included with each system. Meanwhile, on the positive side, industry analyst Stuart Alsop is predicting that IBM will unveil a new marketing strategy that will conquer the clones and stay ahead of the Macintosh. Alsop says IBM is developing separate computer solutions for specific businesses with the goal of totally hiding the operating system from the user. Alsop says he expects IBM sales to increase 50 percent in the next three years while clone sales drop. He said Macintosh sales will increase but will not catch up with IBM. Time now for our software review. Here's Paul Schindler. This is one way to sell automobiles. This is another. This is an advertisement for Ford Motor Company's Mercury Mercure. It's one of the oddest software reviews we've ever done because this isn't a package you buy, it's one you get for free. The question of whether it does anything useful is in the eye of the beholder. This is one of the first CRT billboards, the first interactive advertisement. It's probably the start of a whole new form of advertising. You get a look at the Mercure XR4 Ti sports car, both graphically and in terms of its specifications. Plus, you can compare it to other sports cars in its class. One clever feature allows you to print your own window sticker based on the optional equipment you want, which may also bring on sticker shock when 19,924 pops up as the bottom line, excluding taxes, title, license, and destination charges. It may seem like just another form of hype to you, but when we got our disc, it came late with a small notice apologizing for the delay because demand far exceeded supply. Now, whether floppy ads are less irksome than others remains to be seen, but at least you have a free floppy to use when you're done. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Sharp has announced the release of new magneto optical disc drive that can erase and rewrite onto five and a quarter inch optical disc. Each disc can hold 422 megabytes. Digital Equipment Corporation says it will begin manufacturing the Microvox 2 in India. Digital says it also hopes to use Indian engineers to develop software for the international market. Finally, if you'd like to find out if Gary Hart can really win the presidential election, there's a new piece of software called President-Elect. You can be any of 67 real political candidates and plot your strategy through primaries, caucuses, and the press. One reviewer said it's very realistic. Experience, honesty, and ability gets you nowhere. That's it for this week's Random Access. I'm Cynthia Steele. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles cover the latest in microcomputer technology throughout the world. Byte, the international standard.